In gridiron football, the outcome of a game depends on the types of plays that the offense and the defense call. Broadly speaking, the offense wants to call a running play while the defense is anticipating a pass, and wants to call a pass play when the defense is anticipating a run. For the defense, it's the same thing, but in reverse. They want to call run defenses against running plays and pass defenses against passing plays. Imagine that you are the offensive coordinator of a team and that these are the default probabilities of victory given a play that you call and a play that the defense calls. For example, if you call a run while the defense elects to defend against a run, you'll win 40% of the time and the defense will win 60% of the time. Zooming out, this is your standard sort of guessing game that is omnipresent in game theory. As the offense, sometimes you need to run and sometimes you need to pass. If you act predictably, the defense can exploit you. Same thing for the defense, of course. If the defense were to act predictably, then you would be able to exploit them. Thus, the defense is sometimes going to choose to defend against the run and sometimes is going to choose to defend against the pass. Fortunately, your front office has given you the opportunity to improve the team by signing a new running back. There are three free agents to choose from. First is Mr. Balance. If you sign him, he will add two percentage points to both of the running outcomes. So if you look at the top row, that will turn the run defend run outcome to a 42% chance of victory for yourself. And it will turn the run defend pass outcome to a 50% chance of victory for yourself. The second free agent option is the punisher. He will add three percentage points to your run outcome if the defense guards against the pass. In other words, you're gonna turn that 48 into a 51% chance of victory. Nothing else will change. Your final choice is the tough nose. He will add five percentage points to run if the defense guards against the run. That means taking the 40% in the top left corner and turning it into a 45%. Your puzzle for today is simple. Which of these three free agents will maximize your probability of victory? And as a bonus, how much will that optimal free agent increase your probability of victory over the default team that you currently have? Before you calculate anything, I want you to try to guess what the correct answer is. And there's some intuition for why each of these might be the right free agent to sign. Mr. Balance, as his name implies, provides good coverage to each of those run outcomes. So it might be more difficult for your opponent to exploit that decision. The Punisher, again, as his name implies, really hammers the defense for choosing to defend against the pass while you run the ball. So if you want to punish that behavior, he's your guy. Finally, the tough nose adds the largest amount of raw percentage points to the table. So if you think that will be helpful, then you should sign him. Which of those do you think is the right intuition? Go ahead and post your answer in the comments below. And while you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today comes from Chapter 1 of Game Theory 101, The Complete Textbook. You're going to have to use the mixed strategy algorithm to establish what the strategies are going to be here for each of those free agent signings, and then use that information to calculate the expected payoff associated with each of them. And of course, whichever one is the highest expected payoff is the free agent that you should choose. Are you ready for the answer? Let's start off by calculating your baseline probability of victory without any free agent signing. When the defense plays this game, its goal is to mix between defending the run and defending the pass 
in a way that makes your payoff for choosing to run equal to your payoff for choosing to pass. If they do that, then they have chosen a strategy that you cannot exploit. Let's call the probability that your opponent chooses to defend the run P. Then your payoff for choosing to run the ball is P times 40%, plus 1 minus P times 48%. That's coming from the first number in each of the cells of the top row. Meanwhile, your payoff for passing is P times 56%, plus 1 minus P times 45%. Those numbers are coming from the first entries in both of the cells in the bottom row. Remember that your opponent's goal here is to make your payoff for running equal to your payoff for passing. That means we can take the top row and set it equal to the second row. If we do that, we have one equation with one unknown variable, which means we can solve for p, and we have p then equal to 3 over 19. That means that the defense should defend against the run 3 in every 19 times, and defend against the pass 16 in every 19 times. If the defense randomizes in that way, then you are going to get the same probability of victory regardless of whether you run or pass. The defense has created a strategy that cannot be exploited. To calculate your baseline probability of victory, all we need to do is take that p equal to 3 over 19 and substitute it into either of the top two lines. Here I've done that for the top line. And if we do just a little bit of arithmetic, we get that your win probability is about 46.74%. So you are a slight underdog in this default baseline game before you've signed a free agent. Now imagine that you have signed Mr. Balance. I have therefore increased your probability of victory for each of the run outcomes by two percentage points. To calculate the effect of Mr. Balance on your probability of victory, we're going to run through the same algorithm as last time. We begin by writing down what your probability of victory is for run and your probability of victory is for pass. The only difference between this and the previous case is that we've added, again, two percentage points to each of your run outcomes. We then set those two things equal to each other and solve for P. And if we do that, we now have P equal to five over 19. We can substitute p equal to 5 over 19 into either of those two equations from above. And if we do that and add a little bit of extra arithmetic on the side, we eventually get that your probability of victory has increased to 47.89%. That's not bad. Mr. Balance looks like a promising candidate. He's increased the probability of victory by a little bit more than a percentage point. The reason that it's not two full percentage points, of course, is that Mr. Balance is going to only impact the run outcome, not the run and the pass outcome. So you don't get the full two percentage points all of the time, you only get it some portion of the time. What about the tough nose? Remember that this is the free agent that just adds five percentage points to the run, defend, run outcome in the top left corner. We're going to go through the same algorithm as last time. We write down the probabilities of victory for run versus pass. We set them equal to each other and solve for p, and we get p equal to 3 over 14. We substitute p equal to 3 over 14 into one of the top two lines, and if we do that and add a little bit of arithmetic on the side, we get that the probability of victory is 47.36%. Unfortunately, because Mr. Balance's probability of victory was 47.89%, that means that the tough nose is not the optimal free agent. If you had guessed that the tough nose was the correct answer, I suspect that your reasoning was that he adds the greatest percentage points overall. That's five percentage points versus the two plus two from Mr. Balance, which is only four percentage points. And yet Mr. Balance is better. Why is that? 
Well, if you think about what your team is good at doing naturally before the free agent signing, it's passing the ball, especially while the defense is defending against the run. Although signing the tough nose shores up your weakness, it doesn't allow you to exploit your strength. Indeed, your opponent defends against the run more often versus the tough nose at 3 over 14 than versus Mr. Balance at 5 over 19. That means that you cannot access that 56% chance of victory in the bottom left outcome as often under the tough nose as you would be able to under Mr. Balance. But we still need to check on the Punisher. Remember that the Punisher adds 3 percentage points to the run, defend, pass outcome in the top right corner. And this is just going to be another repeat of the same algorithm. We write down the probabilities of victory for both run and pass. We set those two things equal to each other, and we solve for p, and we have p equal to 3 over 11. Again, that means that the defense will be defending against the run 3 out of every 11 times. We substitute that p back into one of the equations above, do a little bit of arithmetic, and we get that the win percentage here is exactly 48. 48% of the time, if you sign the Punisher, you will win this game. But wait a minute. 48% is the largest that we've seen so far. That means that the Punisher is the optimal free agent. That may be surprising because the Punisher is adding the fewest percentage points to the table. But what he does, as his name implies, is punish the defense for choosing to defend against the pass. As a result, the defense defends against the run more often under the Punisher than any of the other free agents. That again allows you to play to your strengths of passing and is why your probability of victory maximizes with the Punisher. Mixed strategies are weird, aren't they? And to answer the bonus question, the Punisher adds about 1.25% to the probability of victory over the default level. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Take care.